In West Africa, farmers grow exotic vegetables like lettuce, cabbage, and spring onions to earn a living and to improve their livelihood. These vegetables are well appreciated in the cities, where they are usually eaten raw as salads. Vegetables are important for a balanced diet. Therefore, vegetable production contributes significantly to urban food supply. Lack of wastewater treatment has resulted in polluted water bodies around cities. As clean and affordable water is seldom available, many farmers have no choice but to irrigate with this polluted water. This water, however, contains chemicals and pathogens too small to be seen with the naked eye. These pathogens may lead to diarrhea, typhoid, cholera, and worm infestations. This can affect the farmer, the farmer's family, and anyone who eats raw vegetables grown with this water. The health risk for the public has been worrying us for many years now. We therefore decided to drill boreholes and to work with researchers who study safer irrigation practices in and around cities like Kumase, Accra and Tamale. The World Health Organization recommends several entry points for health risk reduction from the point where wastewater is generated to the point where vegetables are consumed. This could be best accomplished with comprehensive wastewater treatment, but this is hardly done in many developing countries because of the high costs involved. We are looking at the risk reduction on the farms in the markets and in kitchens where vegetables are prepared. The best impact it can be achieved if different practices are combined. Together with farmers, we first identified simple and affordable practices which could easily be adopted by farmers and also by traders who buy on the farms. After that, we tested uh, some of these uh, practices that we earlier identified on actual field conditions. We quantified the effectiveness to reduce uh, health risks and also the adoption potential by farmers. There are many ways to reduce crop contamination when irrigation water is polluted. Ten possible practices shall be presented here. If farmers using polluted water have the choice between different crops, they should grow those which are not eaten raw. Often, there are other crops that are equally profitable on the local market. If a pond, drain or slowly moving stream is not stirred, pathogens, especially worm eggs, settle to the bottom. Therefore, by fetching the water from the surface rather than 
from the ground, one can avoid that already settled worm eggs enter the watering can. Stir up the water as little as possible with your feet and can. By placing a row of sandbags in a stream, a pool is created that allows worm eggs to settle. Water should only be fetched downstream of this line of bags. For easy fetching, dig a small hole or make a second pool with another line of sandbags. Many pathogens are attached to organic debris. Holding back such debris by using a piece of cloth or mosquito net will also reduce the pathogen load in the irrigation water. Clean the filter to allow easy flow. Cupping the spout and holding the watering can low reduces the splashing of pathogens from the soil back onto the leaves of the crop. Such splashing should be avoided as much as possible. The use of furrow irrigation reduces the contact between crop and irrigation water. Furrow irrigation is possible where water can be channeled to flow onto the field. Also, the use of drip irrigation reduces contact between irrigation water and crop leaves, resulting in less pathogens on the crop. In order to reduce clogging of the pipes, the water has to be filtered. For example, through a piece of cloth or sand. There are many different drip systems on the market for various crops and different water qualities. Ask FAO, the Ministry of Agriculture, or the local universities for low-cost kits. Stopping irrigation sometime before harvest supports natural pathogen die-off by the sun. Farmers need to plan in advance with their vegetable traders on which day they come to harvest the crop. Stopping the irrigation for the last two to four days reduces contamination considerably. However, longer periods would be more effective. Farmers should use mature manure since fresh manure contains live pathogens. Turning a pile of fresh and moist manure once a week over about five to six weeks allows all parts of it to get hot which kills most pathogens. After this period, it can safely be applied. However, it is still recommended to apply the manure to the soil and not on top of the crops. When 
Traders wash just harvested vegetables with the local irrigation water. Crop contamination is again increased. Washing should be done with clean water at the market or in private homes. Without this change, all previously presented improvements are useless. Farmers and extension officers should discuss together which of these 10 practices can be applied in a given case. To have a significant health impact, as many of these practices as possible should be combined. Traders started more and more asking about the irrigation which I'm using. In fact, I was worried about my business because I thought I would lose my customers. So after the training, I started to adopt some of the improved practices that were recommended to me by the extension services. I easily got used to them. We are also concerned about the farmer's own health. And uh, for farmers who use wastewater to irrigate their crops, can significantly reduce their health risks by putting on protective wear such as the rubber boots. There are farmers also who use a fecal sludge as a fertilizer. We also recommend that they put on gloves and also wear a facial mask, thereby preventing the inhaling of dust and reducing the other nuisance. Our emphasis is also on uh, personal hygiene and farmers are being advised to shower or at least wash their hands after farm work before they get into contact with other people or even with food. We would encourage the farmers to adopt improved practices and for this to happen we need to have more awareness campaigns and also for trained extension personnel to support these farmers. Farmers can also be motivated with incentives such as the tenure security for their plots and also have special recognition during the annual National Farmers Day. Another possibility is to give recognition to some traders by marking or labeling their stands for consumers who like to pay more for clean crops to patronize their stands. The first step will be to create awareness on the invisible risk of pathogens. Only when farmers are aware of the potential health threats they post to the public, will they realize their responsibility. However, for effective action against crop contamination, intensive training of farmers is needed. Extension staff and farmers will have to work together to secure the health of the consumers. I'm